This news program is proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Mnow Biscuits. Puma Energy refuse fuel supply to domestic airlines. World AIDS Day celebrated. And West Papua 61st anniversary interrupted by police. Good evening, you're watching National MTV News. I'm Grace Papiali. Thank you for joining us. Fuel supplier in the country, Puma Energy, has refused its fuel supplies to domestic airlines throughout the country, which is said to affect the operations of all domestic flight out of Port Mosby and in the country. And New Guinea wishes to advise the traveling public that due to an ongoing dispute between Puma Energy and the Bank of PNG, Puma has decided to restrict the supply of fuel to New Guinea and all other airlines effective from today. Today. This restriction applies to Port Mosby and all the airports around PNG. Unfortunately, there is no alternative supplier of aviation fuel in most airports, including Port Mosby. In New Guinea today cancelled its flights due to Puma Energy's refusal to supply Jet A1 fuel to the airlines and will also cancel half its domestic flights for tomorrow to reflect these restrictions imposed by Puma. These cancellations will be an ongoing issue until Puma's restrictions are removed and New Guinea regrets any inconvenience caused to their customers. However, the situation is outside the airline's control. And New Guinea said we have done everything possible to ensure that this situation did not occur, that we could continue to support the people of Papua New Guinea, especially in this busy Christmas period. We can assure all our customers that we are completely up to date with our payments to Puma Energy, and this regrettable situation is 100% outside the control of Air New Guinea. And New Guinea will continue to work with all concerned to ensure that normal operations can resume as quickly as possible to restore normalcy to all flights around the country. And New Guinea has also apologized for the inconvenience caused, acknowledging that the matter is outside of its control and that the airline will not reduce its operational standards and that safety is always paramount. Customers are advised to revalidate their travel to the next available flight once the date these restrictions will be lifted is known. Meanwhile, Puma has advised that they will continue to refuel international flights as normal. Godwin Eki, National MTV News. Meanwhile, Puma Energy have advised New Guinea at 5 p.m. today that they have resumed normal supply of fuel. New Guinea therefore expects to resume operating a normal schedule by tomorrow. New Guinea customers are advised to revalidate their travel to the next available flight. Prime Minister James Marape has responded to a question without notice raised by member for Menyama, Solen Loifa, today in regards to the tougher fees charged by New Guinea, especially during this Christmas period. Prime Minister Marape responded on behalf of the state-owned enterprise minister, William Duma, who was excused from parliament. The rise in efforts and services provided by the state-owned entity Aviation Air New Guinea was questioned today on the floor of Parliament. This question without notice was raised by the member for Menyamia, Solan Loifa, for the Minister for State Enterprises, William Duma. Now we look at the time for Christmas. Air New Guinea is charging plenty of fees. Penalty fee, case handling fee. And work law, charging law, traveling public na. Plant demand Mary or work law, Zimbabwe Arab law, this law fee. And so we ministry them, but making one of something or work law making one of them help him all this law man Mary. You meet all of them in New Guinea and company law, state na state them all man Mary stop na. In Arab law you meet all of them all in work law, but Arab law all man Mary law you meet stop na charging all the big law money, hefty cost. Instead of being Albi Modis Blolman Mary, some of the same company Blolman Mary, you may have been Molman Mary, Larry Molron Gogam, Logan Mabola Golem. Thank you, Mr. Assistant Speaker. 
Prime Minister James Marape responded on behalf of the State Enterprises Minister William Duma. But I'm something I'm stopped the control on all New Guinea. Uh, all associate fees are stopped the ticket. There was some suggestions made earlier uh, on all sub law fees. You miss a charge in Manta. If this law fees, we play asking minister or relevant ministers, Minister of Law uh, Civil Aviation, uh, Minister of Law Transport, as well as uh, Minister of Law State Enterprise, are looking all fee associate want more tickets. That area you make it look look long. In. But look, really keeping Air New Guinea running, the ticket cost, have something where you may not have uh, the influence to us. But if there is some space to assist, you may go, uh, assist. Me giving barely see long, uh, remember you asked him a question. I'll get the Minister for Civil Aviation and the Minister for uh, State of Enterprise to look, to combine into not just Air New Guinea ticket and the cost of Air New Guinea, but the total package. It relate long cost from the travel where some of the fees to be built into this block cost and we'll get back to the member and to the people. Thank you very much. The nation the na Narada, the NCD Provincial Health Authority, together with the National AIDS Council Secretariat and partners, commemorated the 2022 World AIDS Day today by staging a walk for equality for all. World AIDS Day is celebrated every 1st of December around the, around the world with the aim of ending HIV and AIDS by 2030. This year's World AIDS Day is celebrated with the theme Equalize to End Inequality and to End HIV Age. The NCD PHA stated that HIV remains a major health problem in the country. They stated that there needs to be more awareness programs and funding to extend services for HIV AIDS in the country. Currently, the status of people living with HIV AIDS is around 59,000 with only 38,000 on treatment. Carol Habina, an advocate with IGAT OP Inc., stressed on the importance of the remaining 21,000 people without treatment. She said for this year's theme of equality, it is important that these remaining patients get treatment. She is calling on the government of the day to provide more funding. National AIDS Council director says HIV AIDS is not a killer disease as there is now treatment available around clinics and hospitals nationwide. He highlighted that the way forward for NACS now is to do more testing and get the statistics of patients, provide counseling and do more awareness for HIV and AIDS. Cynthia Maku, National MTV News. The police went and stopped the West Papuans who gathered this morning to celebrate their 61st anniversary of struggle to recuperate West Papua independence since 1961 in Port Mosby. The Minister for Foreign Affairs, Justin Tachenko, went after the police asking for clarifications as to why the event is not allowed to take place. He said the West Papuans have outstanding issues that are concerning them, and one of them is the citizenship of becoming a Papua New Guinean. More than 300 West Papuans living in Port Mosby gathered at Ibarra Tower where their main centre is ready for the celebration this morning. Unfortunately, the police went and stopped them due to some outstanding issues. The chairman of United Liberation Movement for West Papua, PNG Office Philip Kepan said they have given a formal notice and an invitation to the Office of Foreign Affairs to celebrate the day and also to open their new office. Unfortunately, he confirmed that there was no formal response letter given until today. They came up there with the CFA, they put up this property here. And this land is acquired not by uh, surprise or by fluke, it is given to the this, uh, West Papua people by the national government through a national executive council decision. And they put up this uh, building here. And they want to open this, this building so that the, we can now work together to recognize, to see the affairs of the people of West Papua in the country, their refugees, their health, their welfare, the affairs of the West Papua living in this country. 
not very happy with the government of the day. I'm not very happy with the authority, whichever authority they came down with that letter. Even I've never cited that letter. And yet they, they came down like criminals. They treated us like criminals. Foreign Minister Justin Tetsengo went there to listen to their concerns and said the most important thing is to respect each other. He said about 1,000 West Papuans were put through citizenship committee and were given PNC citizenship four to five years ago. With that, about four to 5,000 West Papuans have applied to become Papua New Guineans but still haven't been processed as yet and he will find out what is causing the delay. Very important that um, uh, we do the right thing by our, diplomatically by uh, by our neighbours, and uh, Indonesia, uh, of course, have, have raised some concerns, some concerns about um, the issues that were uh, happening here with our West Papuan refugees. Um, and uh, but at the end of the day, they are also going through uh, difficult situations and it comes very frustrating for them as well. So we work together to get a win-win situation. Tetsengo also mentioned that the other issue is the land that they are living on, but this is a local issue that they will fix. He said he was there to explain and to respect the laws of PNG and to respect the Republic of Indonesia. At the end of the day, we have rules, laws to follow, and uh, that's why I'm here as the Minister for Foreign Affairs, not to fight, not to yell, not to scream, not to dictate, but to come to a common understanding. Estagane, National MTV News. Meanwhile, the senior West Papuan representative, Frank McEnuy, appealed to the government of Papua New Guinea to change the laws and the foreign policy to accept and allow them to campaign peacefully under the legal rights stated by the United Nations article. Augustin Rapa, who went to witness the celebration, said West Papuans are part of us and the government of this country has to recognize them. He said it must be an important agenda that we have to push through in this country. They are part of us, we are part of them. And the government of this country has to recognize that, has to understand that. Me, I'm a master, me appreciate him. Visit Blah, Chasin Tetsenko, this is a way forward. This is a way forward. And me thank him also and come up here, Loki uh, Simbisla. Issue first hand, then by calling me go to cabinet and discuss him. Lo move him simply something forward inside this country. Augustin Rapa also urged the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Justin Tetsenko, to take this matter to the United Nations and address this once and for all. On behalf of the 7,000 West Papuans living in Papua New Guinea, the senior West Papuans said they will fight for the freedom aspirations as long as they live and if they die, their children will take over the fight. Uh, with regard to the freedom aspirations of the West Papuan people, um, all I can say is that you can take a West Papuan out of West Papua, but you will never take West Papua out of the man which means we will fight for the freedom aspirations for as long as we live. And if we die, our children will take over, and then their children. This is an ongoing uh, campaign. This is an ongoing struggle. Um, and it is not just a struggle. It is a right, a legal right, under the United Nations articles that the indigenous people of West Papua or any indigenous people around the world must have the right to self-determination. An emotional West Papuan women's rep, Fanny Kogoyani, also shared the same sentiments. You mean, uh, you mean man blow island of Niguni? This la all talk of Papua Niguni or West Papua, new platas all name, all white man come and put him. So some of the time, me feel him hard, me feel him uh, sorry, na, me karai. Brothers and sisters blow here, my, my family here. You play talking, me play, oh, you play Indonesia. No, God, me play with West Papua and tap blow this like ground. One play ground, that's all. One play solo water, one play tumbuna blow you me. Estagane, National MTV News.
The Minister for Oil Palm, Francis Maneke, today on the floor of Parliament, has revealed that the oil palm legislation, regulatory framework and the policy is halfway to completion. The minister made this statement following a question without notice from the member for Alotau, Ricky Morris, on the subject matter. Member for Halatau, Ricky Morris, when raising this issue on the floor of Parliament, said the oil palm industry, since its operation, operated without any regulatory powers to regulate the industry. Over the years, foreign milling companies have become regulators, leaving the oil palm industry corporation, a government body, out of the picture, and call for an urgent legal policy framework to govern the industry's operations in the country. Uh, industry does not have any legal regulatory powers to regulate and manage the industry and its operations. The industry needs an urgent legal policy framework to govern its operations. Can the minister assure this house as to when he has plans to bring the OPIC authority bill and the oil palm management bill to this house for endorsement in the near future? Minister Manake has revealed that the ministry is working on a 100-day plan that aims to create legislation, regulation and policy to drive the industry going forward, prioritizing the growth of the economy. I'm working on the 100-day plan, which includes the, um, the legislation to industries, which, uh, which will, which, which will uh, involve the, uh, the uh, industry players, so as our government, uh, important uh, institutions to make sure that uh, we come up with a new legislation covering the industry, the new policy, so as the, uh, uh, the new regulatory framework that will help to drive the industry. Um, the minister also highlighted that support is needed from the House to ensure they come up with the new legislation, regulations and policy to drive the industry forward. To do more consultation. The legislation is now uh, up way, uh, so is the policy and the, uh, legislation, uh, the uh, regulation. So it will be a, it will be a more uh, brand new uh, legislation and regulation as we're going to see driving this uh, uh, industry forward. I, I need support from all of you members in this house, honorable house, as to how we're going to drive this very important industry in our country. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to National MTV News. A question without notice raised to the State Enterprises Minister and Prime Minister by the Governor for Millen Bay Province, Gordon Wesley. This was in relation to the delayed 52 million kina shares of oil palm business owed and held by Kumul Consolidated Holdings. Stay out, Millen Bay. The governor for Millen Bay Province, Gordon Wesley, questioned the minister responsible for state enterprises on the long-awaited outstanding payment of shares that was held back years ago by Kumul Consolidated Holdings. When the national government will pay out Millen Bay, a uh, provincial government, 52 million share payments from the previous oil palm company in Millen Bay, that has been held with Kumul Consolidated Holdings for many, many years. Mr. Speaker, for over many years, successive Millen Bay provincial governments and governors have followed up on a long overdue share payments from the oil palm business and activities are currently held by the Kumul Consolidated Holdings Limited. We are aware that the National Executive Council has resolved to make a payment of 52 million on to the Milne Bay Provincial Government as share payments which have been outstanding going back decades. Mr. Speaker, my first question to the Honourable Prime Minister, will the Prime Minister assure the people of Milne Bay Province and my government that this will be paid without delay? Two, if so, when will this be? If not, why? It's been a long time. 
Prime Minister James Marape in response firstly apologized for the past government's delay in addressing the seriousness of this issue. Uh, but on the question that uh, governor has raised, uh, I do sincerely apologize on behalf of the past government, of which I was uh, finance minister and, and present government for what is a uh, delayed remittance of what is due to your province. Prime Minister Marape then assured the governor and his people of Milling Bay province that this matter will be looked into and addressed accordingly. What is owed to Milling Bay and owed to uh, Oro province as a result of transfer of this oil palm says uh, and uh, says that he uh, was held in trust by uh, KCH. Uh, it was affirmed that we owed uh, national government owed uh, the two provinces some money for the transaction that took place. Uh, dating back, if I'm not wrong, 10 years or so, uh, I want to assure you and your provincial government and the people of Millen Bay, it is owed to you. Uh, it is not a matter of uh, uh, not coming to you, but it's a matter of when we find the money and send to you. I give you my fullest assurance at the very earliest when we could put together, we could send uh, the money to you in, in cash or in kind. Under Secretary of State for Management, Ambassador John Bass, along with Prime Minister James Marath, Marape officiated the opening and dedication ceremony of the, new, of the new U.S. Embassy in Port Mosby yesterday evening. The new embassy facility will continue in the strengthening and expanding of the existing relationship between the two countries. Traveling on behalf of the State Secretary Anthony Blinken, Ambassador Bass had the ceremony emphasized that the facility reflects U.S. and PNG's relations and the state's perceptions towards PNG. And deepening partnership between our countries and our peoples. Diplomats come and go. That is the nature of our profession. But our embassies and all of our local colleagues who work in them remain. They provide the platform that enables us to do all of the work and achieve all of the things that we are able to do together. And this embassy... Ambassador Bass said the new embassy is twice the size of the previous embassy, which signifies the commitment the U.S. has in working alongside PNG to achieve the shared initiatives and expanding the scope of the shared agenda. There's a lot of potential here for us to do more together and particularly to do more to benefit the people of this country. If we realize even half of the potential of what we can do together, this facility will rapidly become too small. Ambassador Bass added that the building uses green energy and reduces the amount of electricity as a way to support the fight against climate change and also signifies the shared history between both countries. This sentiment was also shared by Prime Minister James Marape. USA not only is a bilateral relationship, in terms of politics, but we said deep history. We said deep philosophical uh, viewpoints. Uh, commonalities are many, our differences are very, very few. Prime Minister Marape at the event headed that PNG will continue to talk business and get engaged in the downstreaming processing. Papua New Guinea cannot be forever designated as a fragile state. I am looking for business opportunities in the abundance of resources we have in Papua New Guinea. My tuna must be processed in this country. My fisheries resources must be processed in this country. Sustainable use of land, including harvest of forest resources, must be made in this country. And of course, the event was attended by high-profile delegates with ribbon cutting by the ambassador, Prime Minister and Sarzay de Fair to signify the opening of the grand facility. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News.
The official handing over of the National Capital District Metropolitan Superintendent today at the Barocco Police Station was done between the new Metropolitan Superintendent Silva Sika and the outgoing Metsup Gideon Ikumu. The event was witnessed by Commander for NCD and Central and Assisting Commissioner Anthony Wagambi Jr. and a member for Mosby Northeast, John Cowper. The official ceremony commenced with a parade by over 100 police officers in the nation's capital in front of the Boroko Police Station this morning. After the parade, an official welcome was made by the police officers to the commander for NCD and Central and Assistant Commissioner Anthony Wagambe Jr., outgoing Metsup Gideon Ikumu and the incoming Metsup Silva Sika. The outgoing Metsup in his official speech thanked the team for working with him for the past 24 months. He highlighted some of the objectives he has achieved while being the Metsup for NCD. Things on their own and the PSCs and the bosses did not know where the policemen are. Police brutality was very high. The infamous Saraga police station. All get a man go up, look simba grab the soul. Fight him all, want them policemen. That was 24 months ago, but not anymore. That's one of the few things that we achieved together. Man, nothing, nothing, he no sakama mo. Why? Because we took command and control seriously. Why? Because we took account of every policeman and what they were doing on the street. He also asked the team to work together with the new Metsup for the good of the community and the people. The new Metsup, Silva Sika, acknowledged Ikumu and the team for work they did and highlighted some of the key areas that he will be working on. I hope the assistant officer, the divisional commander, to deliver and manage leadership and improve on that. We've got to enhance our performance. It's going to be internal before we can go out there to community to address them. Community. My second priority is to make sure that we embrace community policy. I know that it's already been started. We've got to do some more work. He says he will continue from where Kumu has left off and also further address other areas that need improvement. Commander NCD and Central thank the former Metsu for doing a great job in controlling law and order in the city. On behalf of the NCD and Central Command, Division, I would like to uh, thank Mr. Kumu uh, for the 24 months you have been with us here. So every person who takes up the Metropolitan Command seat is in the hot seat. So uh, I commend Mr. Kumu for being with us during the time. He also welcomed the new Metsup and says the NCD Metropolitan Command is not an easy task as there are activities happening everywhere and also people are continuing to flock into the city. Samantha Solomon, National MTV News. Following the handover takeover of the NCD Metropolitan Command, the command saw two new appointments in the ranks of Officer in Charge Prosecution and Officer in Charge Criminal Investigations. Outgoing OIC Prosecution's Chief Inspector Bobby Alisa is replaced by Chief Inspector Binvoli Boas and Acting OIC for Criminal Investigations Chief Inspector Robert Volo is replaced by Chief Inspector Charles Winuan. Outgoing OIC for Prosecution and Chief Inspection, Bobby Alisa spoke at the press conference after the end-over takeover ceremony, saying the police face really big challenges when it comes to investigations and prosecuting offenders. But one of the biggest challenges that we as policemen and women are facing is investigations and uh, prosecution of offenders. As prosecutors, it is our duty to prosecute offenders. Uh, to bring offenders to, to court and to see that justice is done. It's not our duty to, you know, punish the offenders, but to see that justice is done. He appealed to the new management to assist the investigation and the prosecution teams. A total of three new officers have been elected and will be taking over from the whole Metsup and the two OIC officers. Samantha Solomon, National MTV News. 
And now taking a look at the Nest Fund market report, the Kina closed unchanged at 2840 US dollars in the interbank market this morning. At BSP, Yokina was buying 0.2765 US dollars, 0.4041 Australian dollars, 0.2584 Euro, 37.77 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading higher, coffee closed higher, cocoa closed higher. Copper closed lower, palm oil closed lower, crude oil is trading lower, copper closed higher. On the stock market, the Dow Jones closed higher, the ASX 200 is trading higher, the All Ordinaries is trading higher. National MTV News continues after the break with more stories. Stay with us. Welcome back to National MTV News. In the recent parliament sitting, member for Jimmy Open, Wake Goy, asked a question to the Minister for Provincial and Local Level Government Affairs, Soroy Eoi, regarding council's lobbying together to do vote of no confidence for LLG presidents in his district. President. Let him stop. Jimmy Open member Wakegoi asked Minister Heoi if he is aware of the by-election of LLG presidents in his electorate which was organized by his department. He said the local members of parliament including their governor are not aware of this. After election, after declaration of uh, our governor and three of the local MPs, all kata LLGs, Blomibla Oligolo camp. All stop lock camp, lobby long, Sanison president. All stop, even stop today. Mibla Ronim, PEC, Mibla Makim, DPD governor. I, governor Blomi in our way. Not na South Waki, Tubla MP, na minister in our way. So please, you talk save long flow, na people of Chiwaka, and direction blow you. Na only make him this blah, all too like Sanison, DPD. In response, Minister Aoi says he is not aware of this matter as well and will find out from his department before giving an answer. This question is also applicable to many parts of our, our country. Uh, so much has been happening, sometimes legal, sometimes illegal, sometimes our officers are cohorted to, to supporting different political interests in the provinces and um, I think what's happening on the ground at Jimmy is exactly uh, political uh, oppose in, uh, oppositions. Minister Aoi went on to clarify that if a president has contested the recent national general election then by law there is a vacancy for a new president to be elected. That government caucus have been looking at, and my department has also looked at this issue more closely, uh, especially uh, how do we progress this very important issue. Uh, we want to have it open, the discussion to be open, and that every, every elected members and leaders' input must be taken into consideration before we can then uh, give option to the government. A supplementary question was also asked to the minister by member for Kokopo regarding the process to be followed for the election of the local level government presidents. Of the ward members, whether the people will be electing the presidents or they'll be elected by the ward members in the chamber. Minister Heoi highlighted that they want to have an open discussion on this matter before deciding on what is the best approach to take. Samantha Solomon, National MTV News. A woman is among seven other new board members of the Pogara Special Authority Board that took an oath of 
oath of office today in Port Mosby. Elizabeth Lape, representing the Pogara Landowners Association, said she will do her utmost to represent her people and is grateful for the privilege to be part of the board. The Pogara Special Authority Board swearing in was facilitated by the Department of Provincial and Local Level Affairs. One of their first agendas were to call on the government to expedite the opening of the Pogara Gold Mine. Following years of in-court fighting and continual conflict in Pogera, as to who should sit and make up the board, the Department of Provincial and Local Level Affairs, following due diligence checks, assembled the new Pogera Special Purpose Authority board members that are derived from the old Pogera Development Authority. Before Magistrate Alex Kalandi, officers and Deputy Secretaries of the Provincial Affairs and Local Level Government, the new board members took their oath of office individually. The eight new board members represent the four districts of Pogera, and they are Moses Pera, Pogera Rural LLG, Jones Power Pogera Rural LLG, Anoko Ayala Payela Hewa Rural LLG, David Mapuli Payela Hewa Rural LLG, Mark Tony Ekepa Pogera Landowners Association, New Chairman Nixon Koeka Mangape Pogera Landowners Association, Elizabeth Yarumelape Pogera Landowners Association, and Henry Lara Pogera Landowners Association. New female board member Elizabeth Yarume Lape was grateful for the opportunity to represent her people. It is uh, really uh, chale challenging for us as a female to be on board, but it's the first time, and uh, um, I feel that it's about time women step in in such a position like this. And uh, also, uh, I really want this uh, PDA to be in. The henhouse must be, you know, cleaned up and it must come into effect since we've been waiting for it for eight, eight to seven years. The new board chairman, Nixon Koeka Mangape, made a call on the government to send a battalion of soldiers and police to curb the law and order issues in Pogera and to expedite the opening of the Pogera gold mine. The delay, someone in Barreco, someone in state and someone in Mibla. Mibla, like open mine. Now, not last second order where, you know, functioning law and now, um, uh, Minister, he recognizes Mibla and uh, Mibla sworn in now. Mibla ready to work with the state. Mibla ready to work with the uh, company. Mibla ready to work with the provincial government. So, two years Mibla suffer, now Mibla will be mine. The new board members have taken an oath of office to be honest and are willing to work with developer Barrick New Guinea Limited. Rocky Iso, National MTV News. Christmas came early for Patricia Roa in Port Mosby, who won an Isuzu D-Max from City Pharmacy Scratch to win promotion. City Pharmacy Limited has two more cars to be given away to customers for this month of December. CPL's Scratch to Win promotion, which started a month ago and is ending on the 31st of December of this year, 2022, is for customers to do shopping worth 50 kina and above and get a card to scratch and win items. Patricia Roa did 60 kina worth of shopping from Stop and Shop Central Waigani and got a card where she scratched and won the vehicle. Patricia said this is a dream come true for her and her family to win this vehicle. I made um, 60 kina worth shopping at CPL, Stop and Shop Waigani, yesterday. And I just found out that I won this vehicle. Oh, it's a great deal to my family because the past how many years I've been like catching the public transport. But now this is going to make my um, our life easy going from a to b to wherever we want to go she thanked cpl for the promotion i'd like to thank cpl for this um, great opportunity that they've given to us winning um, items like this a motor vehicle you, this is a big huge um, gift City Pharmacy Limited has two more cars to be given out to its customers nationwide. CPL is encouraging its customers to do more shopping with CPL shops to be a lucky winner in this scratch and win promotion. Cynthia Maku, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break with Trukai Sport. Stay with us.
Watching Trukai Sports. Australia is heading into day two of the first test against the West Indies, a two for 293 win with minus Lebus, rather, unbeaten on 154 points. First weather, not quite turning it on today as they did yesterday. A um, little bit overcast and cooler conditions, but yesterday was the perfect day for the Austra of the Australian Test summer for the Australian side. Marnus Lubbershane dominant in the uh, with the bat, and then a great performance from Usman Khawaja at the top, alongside a solid contribution from Stephen Smith as well. So uh, the Aussies feeling like it pretty much went according to plan. They won the toss, they elected to bat first, and posting just under 300 on day one. They'll feel like day two is a real chance to try and build on that ascendancy. And has Labuschagne got, uh, is, like, is he particularly strong on uh, one side of the field or is he a bit of all-rounder in terms of his, game, his, uh, his batting game? Yeah, well, I guess he and Usman Khawaja are a couple of the players who haven't featured in Australia's T20 World Cup campaign. So they actually played some Sheffield Shield cricket, so they played on pitches like uh, Perth Stadium that we saw yesterday. And just chatting to Usman Khawaja at the end of the day's play, he said it was a little bit soft, a bit tennis ball sort of bounce as opposed to what we saw during the World Cup, where it was really quick with the likes of Mark Wood bowling here in Perth. So... Uh, he had a couple of chances, uh, Manus Lavashane. He was dropped on two occasions. That will be the frustration for the West Indies. But his eighth test century, his seventh here in Australia, he's got a great record of getting Australia off to a positive start, especially when he's playing sides like the West Indies. This was the first time he'd played against them. Um, so he's just got an enormous confidence in not only the preparation he's done, but them being able to execute it out in the middle. And he batted superbly yesterday. We'll be looking to continue on with it today. And who's with him at the crease today? Australia has qualified for the World Cup knockout stage for just the second time after a goal from Matthew Leckie at the 60th minute sunk Denmark 1-0. What's so great about this stage of the World Cup and especially the, the third round of the group stages is that all the matches are playing simultaneously yep. within the group. So you've got the, you've got the added drama. Now, remember, if we drew with Denmark, I think coming into the game, if a, a draw with Denmark, we all thought we were going to go through because France were playing Tunisia yep. and it was like, there's no way Tunisia is going to beat France. <laughs> well, geez. They ended up winning 1-0. Of course, France was playing um, a weaker team yeah. uh, because, because they'd already qualified. But that meant we had to win. And when we did Matthew Leckie on the counter-attack, ironically, Matthew Leckie was the one who crossed the ball into Craig Goodwin uh, to score our first goal at this World Cup. So he's been in and around the goals for us. He's had a hand, a direct hand in two of our three goals. The pass um, from Riley McGree was pretty sweet too. Oh, beautiful pass, nice and n nicely weighted. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, fantastic stuff. And I guess it's not, <laughs> it's not every day you get to play a World Cup match in the round of 16 against Argentina. I'm Trukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. The national women's football team, the Lakatois, will be headed by new coach and English football coach and former professional footballer Spencer Priya to this year's Women's World Cup qualification tournament co-hosted by Australia and New Zealand. Under the watchful eyes of their new coach, Spencer Priya, the national women's soccer team competed to prove their worth to make the cut into the national women's final football squad for this year's qualifying tournament in Sydney, Australia for the Women's World Cup 2023. Coach Priya, who comes with a wealth of experience, who has played in the past for not just one or two, but three different prominent football teams, to playing a coaching role and manager position, said the day with the players was to observe how well they can play with their skills on the field. So it's, um, yeah, look, it's a credit to the to the federation that, you know, the programs obviously allowed some of the players that couldn't come to Sydney the chance to keep going because 
you know, from from this today, what we saw, there's another group of players that will take over to get exposure in a, in a higher intensity environment as well over in Sydney. So it's credit to the Federation for that. He said picking up the best team to take to the qualifiers in Australia is important as it is their way forward to next year's Football Women's World Cup 2023. He said he is happy to work with the players and give them the exposure they need and deserve. But there's some good players that obviously haven't ex had exposure yet, so just talking to the TD, finding out a bit background about everybody and the girls that we'd like to bring in. So yeah, get them get them exposure to that. Some some of the girls that came with us might drop off but we also want to see some others that we really want to give exposure to. So, He said the next few days will be tough, not only for players to work on areas of improvement, but to make sure that Lakatoys are represented by the best players possible. Godwin Eki, Trukai Sports. That ends Trukai Sports. The Money Plus weather report for the next 24 hours is next. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And now looking at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours. In the southern region, Port Mosby, cloudy periods with patchy rain. Popondata, cloudy with rain periods and possible thunderstorms. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that wraps up the new sports and weather for Thursday, the 1st of December 2022. From all of us here, pleasant viewing. Bye for now. This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets.